Hello and welcome back to the channel. So we finally passed 2000 subscribers. So a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed, everyone who comments and everyone who follows the channel. It is nice to know that I am not sat here simply talking to myself. Today we're having a look at running Windows 95 on a pocket PC. The spec for Windows 95 is a mere 20 megahertz CPU and 4 meg of RAM. So in theory we could run it on something like the Philips Nino. This has a 75 megahertz CPU and 4 meg of RAM, 8 if you paid the extra, and you can add a compact flash card with a couple of gig. So should be super easy, right? Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work like that. This has a MIPS CPU, and we're wanting to run x86 software. This is like two completely different languages. So in the early days of Pocket PCs, we had MIPS and SH3 processors of various generations, later to be joined by ARM, which became the dominant CPU. But this meant developers had to compile two or more versions of every single piece of software, never mind if they wanted it to run on handheld PCs as well. So how can we take software that's designed to run on one CPU and run it on a different CPU? So for this, we need an interpreter. And that interpreter takes the instructions from the software, reads it, understands it, interprets it, and sends it on to the CPU for processing. As you can imagine, this means we need a significantly faster CPU than 20 megahertz. In fact, some of the sources I've seen on the internet suggest that for good emulation, you need at least six times the processing power. Although this depends a lot on how efficient the interpreter is and also how similar the architecture of the two CPUs is. The next issue we come to is the RAM and the drives. So on pocket PCs, the RAM is both the RAM and the main drive. We also have memory cards for storage. And so the interpreter not only needs to look at interpreting the instructions, it also needs to direct any RAM requests or memory requests appropriately. This is a further hit on performance. After that, some hardware needs completely emulating. So for example, the BIOS will need emulating, or we might need to emulate a mouse or keyboard. And once again, that's gonna dramatically impact how quickly our emulation emulation will run. And finally, let's not forget that underneath all of this emulation is running Windows CE, which isn't always the most efficient of operating systems itself. So all of this means that you need significantly more system resources than that original machine. This said, emulation is nothing new to handheld PCs and pocket PCs and PARMs and Scions. In fact, most of them have Game Boy emulators and Spectrum emulators and graphic calculator emulators is all available for use. On HPC Factor, there is a really good article about installing Windows 95 on a HP Janata 720. I'll pop a link below. Do have a look at it. In it, you'll see that in, in addition to an interpreter, in this case, Bosch 2.11, you also need to emulate the BIOS and the video firmware. In all, it took a whopping 16 hours to install Windows 95, and it took a further 19 minutes and 8 seconds in order to boot into Windows itself. Not exactly zippy. That said, at some point in the future, I might give this a go. However, for the moment, I have a much better solution for you. So instead of actually installing Windows 95 on a pocket PC, we're going to cheat and use QEMU, which is a common virtualization engine for PCs and has been ported over to ARM in order to run a pre-installed image of Windows 95. Sadly, the original link where I got this software from has been taken down by the user. I do hope this isn't due to copyright infringement. <laughs> However, if you would put the original link up or you created this original image, please let me know in the comments. I would love to credit you. Since everything's under a general public user license, I'm going to host it on the channel Google Drive. The download itself is 147 meg when extracted, so it's not very big. 
It only works on Pocket PC 2002 second edition and higher, and you're going to want a VGA display ideally. You'll also need a memory card. The memory card itself needs to be a lot bigger than the 147 megabyte download. I would recommend using a half gig or a full gig card. And obviously, the faster the card, the better. I have a few suitable pocket PCs to try it on. I have a Fujitsu Lux 720. This has a 525 megahertz CPU with 128 meg of RAM. It's a full G VGA screen and it runs pocket PC 2002 second edition. So it's ideal for trying this. Next up, I have the diminutive N300 from Acer. This also has a VGA screen, even though it is tiny. It's only got a 300 megahertz CPU and 52 meg of RAM. However, it should work fine. It runs Windows Mobile. And finally, I have the slightly unusual, if a bit massive, HTC Advantage. If you've not seen this before, have a look at the video here. It's rocking a 624 megahertz CPU with 112 meg of RAM, full VGA screen, and again, running Windows Mobile. It's also got the advantage that it has a keyboard, which could be useful when running running a full operating system. So I've managed to find three suitable memory cards. I've put the folder that you will download straight onto the memory card at the root of the drive, and let's boot them and see how we go. So once you've downloaded the folder, extracted it, and put it on the root of a memory card, all you need to do is go find it. So go to your Explorer. Oh, and I'm already in. So this is on my memory card at the moment. And all you need to do to start it is hit QUEM Launcher. So there's a couple of options here. You can change the scale so you can have it bigger. I wouldn't recommend that. Or smaller down to 50%. I've left this at 100. This is a VGA resolution screen. It will have a VGA resolution desktop. And there'll be a bit of scrolling due to the taskbar at the top. But it's more than manageable. I've set the orientation on this one to 90 degrees, which means it'll end up in this orientation. On the other two devices, I've set it to 270, um, and that's just so it sits the way I want it. In terms of this, you can select how many megabytes you want the virtual machine to have. The default is eight, and changing this doesn't appear to alter how well the emulation runs. You can also choose whether to use swap files or not. So I'm gonna leave that unchecked. So let's set the other two up, and then we'll see how long it takes to boot. And again, I'm leaving all the settings default. On any of these devices, there are programs to allow you to set the screen to VGA, which reduces the size of the taskbar, and of course will give you a better display after. But I'm not gonna bother doing that. So we need to know how long this is going to take. So here's my stopwatch. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so I think we can all agree it's quite interesting that this one has booted much faster than this one, and that this one is yet to boot. So I'm gonna move those off to the side and we're gonna start and have a look at Windows 95 on a Pocket PC. And if this does ever boot, I'll let you know. So here's our emulation of Windows 95. We've got an unusual keyboard layout at the bottom. Of course, as a Pocket PC, it doesn't have a keyboard, so we need some form of input. There's a black square just here, and this allows you to scroll up and down through the emulation so you can bring up the bottom bar. You can also move the keyboard if you wish, and that allows you to see anything underneath. So we've got the usual, we've got a um, recycle bin, a shortcut to DOS, network management, and a my computer so we can explore windows 95 of course down at the bottom there's also a start bar in the middle you'll see there's some mouse buttons so we've got a right click left click a scroll wheel which i've got to say is impossible to use the bar underneath determines whether or not you are holding the right button down or not so clicking this so it's black means that the right button is not held down clicking it so it's white means it is held down and it will select any items in that box like so, so you can see the box formed there. Let's go to the start menu. Unfortunately, there is no start button on the keyboard, which is a real shame because it would have meant you could use keyboard navigation. I've also found that when it comes to clicking items, you need to put it in select mode and then hit the right button and then go out of select mode. And that seems to be the best way of getting it to click a button. Pressing the right mouse button when it's in this mode doesn't seem to do anything. 
Anyway, let's have a little look. So we've got all the usual accessories. So I think we should have a look at paint. Oh dear, we've managed to perform an illegal operation. So let's close that and we'll try it again, but we'll do it by doing a right click. Lovely, let's scroll up a little bit. Let's make it full screen. So as you can see, you're gonna struggle actually drawing anything on here. Perhaps if we do it very slowly. Very slowly. Nope, let's grab the fill. So I obviously clicked it at the wrong place or there's a gap between my lines. Anyway, we can see that paint actually works. It's very slow. You're definitely not gonna make any masterpieces on your pocket PC in paint. And if we head to my computer, we'll be able to have a look at disk usage when it eventually opens. While I'm waiting for that, I'm just gonna show you this. So here's the HTC Advantage, which has a much faster processor. And you'll notice there's a demonstration document here. And that's because when you save things on the emulation, it actually saves it to the ISO. And so any files that you do create remain here. So this is one I made earlier. So it took so long to load, I genuinely gave up waiting. And just click in, we'll just give it a moment, and then I'm gonna show you just how laggy it is when it comes to writing text. So here it goes. So as you can see, it's hardly fluid and it's about the same speed whether you use the on-screen keyboard or the Advantage's actual keyboard. So if you type in long documents on here, it's going to take a while. So the Pocket Lux still hasn't managed to boot into Windows 95 and it's been a whacking one hour and three minutes. So I don't think it's ever going to achieve it. I am, however, going to leave it to run a bit longer, and should it boot, I will let you know. So when we bring up the disk properties, you can see that the emulator actually pretends it's got a one gigabyte disk, and we're using about 93 megabytes, which is standard for a Windows 95 install. In order to make sure you don't corrupt any files on exit, you really need to close all your windows and then shut down using the start. It is, however, possible to exit simply by pressing exit, although on occasion I have found that that this can corrupt the image. Any files you created or adapted while in the session will now be saved to your image. So we'll come out of there. We're just gonna head back to here. A Couple of things worth noting. First of all, when you make a mouse click, so if we cross this window off, for example, sometimes wriggling the mouse around speeds up the process. It's as if when you make a mouse click or a right click, it lags and then it doesn't do anything until you wriggle the mouse and then it responds. Second tip, when you get a dialog box like this, it is way easier just to use the keyboard than it is to start messing about with the mouse. And the third tip, if you've not changed anything, simply hit exit and that will I've now got a battery warning on this. It's still not booted and it's so far been one hour and 38 minutes. I don't think this is ever going to boot. So we're going to abandon ship. One of the slight quirks about doing this is that this machine is much slower than this machine, even though the HTC Advantage has a 625 megahertz CPU and this only has a 300. The HTC Advantage also has massively more RAM. So I'm not sure whether it's to do with the architecture of those individual CPUs or the way the program runs or disk access, but something means it's much faster on the dinky little N300. So this is a much faster, much easier way of running Windows 95 on your pocket PC. It's still incredibly laggy, even with superior processing power, and a lot of it seems related to the memory card access 
rather than the speed of the CPU. It's just about usable, although you're never going to make this your main operating system, and I for one have certainly enjoyed using it even if it is just for the novelty factor. So I would recommend giving it a go. I have seen videos of people running Vista, XP and Windows 98 on their Pocket PCs. These seem a little memory intensive, so perhaps this is best given a wide berth. If you've given this a go, or you've got a better way of doing this, or you know a more efficient interpreter, please pop a comment below. I would love to hear from you. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. My name's Hugh, this is Handheld Computing. Thanks for watching.